I'm a little bit worried. We might end up bricking this radio. This is the TalkPod A36 Plus. I've done some other videos on this radio recently. From Amazon USA, this radio apparently is locked to GMRS, which is a problem because not all of you want to use it on GMRS. Some of you want to use it on the handbands. As I explained previously in another video, this radio came to me completely unlocked and it come with international firmware. So what we're gonna to do today is we're going to try upgrading this to GMRS firmware, and we'll see if we can downgrade it back to international firmware. Now there's of course a caveat with this that this may brick the radio, this may brick your radio, this may brick this radio, which will end my little experimentation and reviews of this radio. So it could be the end. So use at your own risk. This is where you grab the firmware for the TalkPod A36 Plus. Uh, there is a link in the description below to this page and you can see here that there is three main programs or files also that we need uh, to use. So we've got the firmware update, which is this software up here. This is the bootloader. Then we have two firmwares. We have the INT international version, version 1.18, and we have the version 1.19 GMRS firmware. Up here is the USB driver as well for the TPC02 programming cable, which I believe is this right here that is supplied. I plugged it in and my uh, COM port showed up straight away. So I don't think I need to install the driver. So just in case you do, the drivers for that are there. Now, if you wanna find out what version of firmware is on your radio, all you gotta do is just turn it on, press the green button, which is the menu, and scroll backwards. Whoops, that's the other way. Scroll backwards and number 54, that shows the version. So my version's 1.17, which is neither of these firmwares on the website. Another thing to also make a note of is, and it might change with the menu, we're gonna see what happens when we load the firmware, is menu item number 50. That is the language, it is currently English, and I can only select English. There is no other languages here that I can select. So let's hope that it's gonna upgrade or into English. Without knowing how to upgrade this, <laughs> because I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, there's no instructions, let's plug it in. So we just plug in straight into the side of the radio okay uh, open up the bootloader and of course it's in chinese so uh, i know my com port is com7 so that's good let's select the file you can see there that i've got the gmrs firmware version 1.19 it is a kdhx file now i believe it's this button let's see what this does okay oh it's working 20 percent oh and the and and it's flashing okay so we're upgrading the firmware, cool, 100%. And the radio has rebooted. Now it's rebooted still onto my existing frequency, so that's a good sign. And is if I turn the radio off and we press PTT and we turn it on while we're pressing number two, we get GMRS mode. If I try to transmit, it doesn't transmit. Okay, so it's locked. We can't transmit on the handbands. So let's now turn the radio on while we're pressing PTT and eight. And we get expand, radio reboots. And, ah, okay, we can transmit. So that's good. We can transmit on 140, on, 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 uh, on the handbands. If we try UHF, VK7HH testing, and you can see that it is transmitting. Okay, so the expand works and this is GMRS firmware that is on the uh, on the website. So the first thing that I would probably do is upgrade to the latest GMRS firmware if you've just got it from Amazon version 1.19, which uh, allows you to hold PTT, press eight and turn the radio on and you in, you're into this expand mode, which allows you to transmit on uh, those frequencies. Let's try going back to the international firmware and see if we brick the radio. It's rebooted, it hasn't bricked itself, so that's good. What have we got? Version 1.18, and can we transmit on VK7HH testing? 
we're transmitting on ham frequencies. So the biggest question that I've been asked about this radio since I did a review of it is, what is it like on a spectrum analyzer? So let's go over to the uh, service monitor. We'll put it on and let's just see if it's clean or not. Well, we're looking at a five watt transmitter. That is our handheld radio. 37 dB is uh, five watts. Now, according to FCC rules and Australian rules are relatively close as well, all spurs need to be at least 40 dB down and they also need to be below 25 microwatts, so minus 16 dBm. So that's our magical number that we're looking for. That is the lesser of the two, because if we do 37 minus 40, that is minus three, so minus 16 is less than minus three. So we need to, we need to meet this to uh, comply. So I'm gonna do this test on 146520, and here are all of the uh, harmonic frequencies, uh, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth harmonic. Okay, now I'm gonna do a control test first. I've got my Yaesu VX8 here, and it's on 146520. So let's see how this one goes first as a bit of a control. Okay, we transmit, and there we go. There's our carrier on 146.52. Let's go to the second harmonic. Second harmonic, minus 18, minus 19. So that's compliant. Let's have a look, 439.560, again, minus 22. So again, we're compliant. Right, so that's the Yaesu. Let's move over to the torque pod. Yep, so we're on 146.52, let's TX. Cool, there's our carrier. We're good to go on the second harmonic, let's TX. And we, holy moly, okay. That is 28 dB. That is nowhere near minus 16, where we need it. Let's try 439.56 and Okay, 7 dB, we're still nowhere we need to be. Let's try the fourth harmonic. 4 dB, we're still not there. Fifth harmonic, and we're at zero, we're still going. This is the sixth harmonic. Now, okay, so now we're, we're, we're below that. Okay, so, so by the time we get to harmonic six, it seems like we're okay. I can't go any higher than this because this set only goes up to one gig. Now let's just widen our span out a bit there. I'm on a center frequency of 200 megahertz and the span is 250, so 125 each side. You can see there, there's the first uh, fundamental frequency on the left, which is the two meter 146.52. And the second harmonic is only a couple of dB below it. Same test at 500 megs. And you can see there, so my reference is 40 dB. It's only, it's only about 20 dB down, 10, 20, 30, it's about 30 dB down. So we need to be at least 40 dB down at the very least. And then we also need to be below 25 microwatts. So obviously that's a little bit disappointing. This radio is not compliant with the rules. At least my particular model here, uh, my friend Steve, temporarily offline YouTube channel, he also did a test and his also showed similar results to mine. That said, uh, another YouTube channel, if you've seen Matt over at Tech Minds, he also reviewed this radio a few months ago and his radio seemed clean. So maybe there's some differences there between the particular models of radios that they are sending out. I'm going to email the manufacturer and I'm going to send them the results of this and say, look, this is one thing that you need to fix with this radio and hopefully they listen and in their further revisions, they uh, have clean outputs, but yeah, not this one. Now, I just wondered if I could ask you to please help a bloke out. Yes, please help me out. There is a like button below if you can hit it. It might sound like a very simple thing, but it allows YouTube to see that this video is popular, that it will push it out a little bit more to other people on YouTube, and that helps me with my goal to promote, educate, and inspire people about amateur radio. Of course, I've done a couple of other videos on this radio and also others very similar to it. There is another very, very cheap radio that is only about $20 or $30 at the moment that might interest you. If you'd like to, then please click on it over here. I pointed that way. Please click on it over here, watch those videos, and uh, thank you for watching.